Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 14th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The sextortion scams that we have seen evolving over the last few weeks have come up with yet another twist. The latest version of this scam does try to make the scam more believable by offering the last four digit of one of your phone numbers. And I guess the bad guys have figured out that a lot of people watch porn on mobile devices. So they claim that these are the last four digits of the mobile phone that they compromised. Just like before, by offering up a little bit of information like this, they're trying to get people to actually believe them and pay the ransom. Now, the question here is, why do they only give you the last four digits? DDA had a pretty plausible idea in that this data actually does not come from a breach like the password data we have seen before. Instead, a lot of websites, when you, for example, try to reset your password, they will give you the last four digits of the phone number they're going to send a password reset code to or a token for a two-factor SMS message. The wording also keeps changing a little bit. There are probably multiple actors in play here. So this may just be a later group that just doesn't have access to any breach information, which may include your complete phone number. And Intel released a bulletin with details regarding a denial of service vulnerability in its troubled Puma cable modem chipset. This chipset family came originally from Texas Instrument, but is now developed and sold by Intel for the last couple of versions and has had a history with users complaining about lower than advertised performance and modem crashes. Apparently, one of the causes of these crashes was the bug that is now being fixed here. Now, typically, this would be a patch that will be applied by your cable modem ISP if your modem is affected and does use this particular chipset. However, this doesn't appear to be the end of the problems for this particular chipset. Users of Canadian ISP Rogers are discussing on DSL reports some additional problems with increased latency under certain traffic conditions for this modem. And I'll link in the show notes to that particular discussion for details. And BTLE jack or Bluetooth low energy jack is a new tool demonstrated at DEF CON to play man in the middle attack with Bluetooth low energy energy connections. What this tool does is essentially allows a user to record a Bluetooth low energy connection, but also to launch denial of service attacks against such a connection. And that's really sort of where the man in the middle part comes in. Once the denial of service attack is launched, the device will try to reconnect. And that's where the attacker then emulates the device and forwards the connection. This particular tool is implemented using the micro bit platform. It's sort of a roughly a Raspberry Pi like platform. In this case, you need this specific hardware because for the tool to work, you need to load a custom Bluetooth hardware into the device. And Tesla removed one important hurdle to allow researchers to actually try to hack their cars. In the past, if you broke your car, basically if you pricked your firmware, then you were pretty much on your own. But Tesla now announced that even if the firmware is broken because you attempted to hack it, they'll still help you and try to get it back into working order. But keep in mind, they're only talking about bricked firmware here. They're not talking about any mechanical damage. And I think if you are driving your car into a wall while you're hacking it, you're probably on your own. So still uh, be careful and make sure you're not endangering anybody else. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.